holy. Hello fellow plastic throwers, this is Falkrum and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at my first Airsoft DSG build. Or as I call it, <laughs> the Uber Womble. Right, well to start off with I suppose I should explain the name to you. The Uber part of the name refers to the fast fire rate of this gun, it fires faster than any other gun I own. And a Womble... <laughs> a Womble is a fictitious character from the titular show The Wombles. <laughs> which is a old British kids show and basically Wombles were these little fictitious rodents which would scavenge for things and rubbish left behind by people in Wimbledon Common. So this gun gets its name the Uber Womble because it's made out of bits and bobs laying around the house and it fires incredibly fast. Now the base gun is a JG Org A2 with the barrel sawn down. I bought this from a good friend of mine and it used to be two-tone, in fact he painted it with some Yukara compliant paint which is supposed to peel off easily and he owned it for ages and none of the paint ever came off. Second I started using it, it started sh uh, shedding paint on basically everywhere. But yeah, it used to be blue, it used to be two-toned. And when I first got it, my intention was to DMR it. A stock JG Org A2 has a 509mm inner barrel in a gun that is shorter than a G36C. Now this gun is ballpup, which explains the massive barrel length in such a small weapon platform. As a DMR, it was alright, it could have been done a bit better. It had a PPS type bore in it and it was firing at around 400 FPS. And it was perfectly usable, but it was a bit noisy and a bit sluggish and it... It wasn't as good as my M14. And then I decided, since I've got loads of guns spare, I thought, let's try and do something a bit radical with this gun. Let's do something a bit, a bit silly with it. So I tinkered around with short stroke in this and running it on higher voltages, but then I decided, let's do it properly and let's build ourselves a DSG. Now it's worth pointing out, I'm not an expert on DSGs. This is my first build and I do not claim to be an expert on them in the slightest. In basic terms, a DSG is a dual sector gear. In every AEG you have something called a sector gear, which is a gear with a sector of teeth which pulls the piston back and then releases it. Now this gear here would be known as a single sector gear because it only has one sector of teeth. A dual sector gear has two smaller sectors of gear instead of the one. Now with a single sector gear, every rotation will pull the piston back once, but with a dual sector gear, it will pull the piston back twice. And because of this, a good DSG build can have an incredible rate of fire compared to a single sector build. Now DSG sort of originated in Speedsoft from what I can tell. Now a lot of Speedsoft DSG builds focus on semi-auto trigger response. But I'm not that interested in Speedsoft, I just wanted the fire rate. So the semi-auto trigger response on this gun is not going to be as impressive as some of the DSG builds. I think there's sort of a point where you don't need that much trigger response if you get what I mean. Because you've got other factors like your reaction time and the round travelling to the target. I, I think trigger response gets a bit... It sort of... I think people overestimate the effect it has, but then that's just me. Now a DSG build can impart a lot of stress on a gun's gearbox. Like I said, I'm not an expert on DSGs, but I wouldn't recommend you doing this on your only gun. If you've got another gun spare, then go ahead, but it's it's not easy. It's There's a lot of reading and a lot of work that needs to be done to get it absolutely perfect because it's the sort of thing that, because everything's travelling so fast and you've got such a fast fire rate, if something does go wrong, it's going to be a real mess inside the gearbox. Now we're going to talk about the internals of this gun a bit later, but for now we're going to look at the externals. And as you can see, the outer barrel has been sawn down. The inner barrel in this gun is now a M4 carbine barrel, and it is a AOLS 603 type ball with a Sugru R-Hop. Now this is the same barrel that we had in the CA, which was also our hopped at the time. Now even though this AOLS barrel cost around about a tenner, it seems to be a really good barrel and it works really well at flattening the trajectory. And combining the barrel with a Sugru R hop seems to have given this gun a decent amount of range and it is also relatively accurate. And as you can see, compared to my Ares Amoeba CCR, this gun is incredibly compact and yet this gun has about three times the barrel length of the CCR. This gun weighs 3.5 kilograms, which is 7.6 pounds, and it is also quite a dense gun. It's quite small in this case, especially since it's sawn down, but it's really quite heavy. And thankfully, because the gearbox is located at the back in the stock, it means that there's not much weight on the front of the gun, so it sits nicely against your shoulder. Now, the externals are mostly constructed out of polymer, although you do have a metal front end and rail system on top. Now, the trigger on this gun I'm not a big fan of because it is a two-stage trigger or a progressive trigger. In normal operation, the first stage is semi-auto, then the second stage is full auto. And unlike the P90, you don't have the option of a selector switch, it is purely down to the trigger. Now, I had to really MacGyver the trigger to get it to work. The replacement contacts in the gearbox are slightly different, so it means the semi-auto stage no longer works. You have to pull it slightly slightly further back to get semi-auto and the fully automatic contacts which basically bypass the contacts in the gearbox I got rid of when I DMR'd it and thought I'll never need them again and I'm kicking myself for chucking them out 
So to replace the full auto contacts, I use a small tactile button switch on a piece of aluminium. Both sets of contacts then connect to a X Cortex trigger MOSFET. This is just a basic box and the trigger MOSFET. There is no active braking, there's no fancy programming. It's just a basic trigger MOSFET. And then I modified the trigger safety slightly. Normally the safety only has two positions, which is safe and fire. However, I've managed to modify it so it can sit in the middle instead. And this will block the trigger from going to the full auto stage. The charging handle is located on the left hand side and pulling the charging handle back will actually expose the hop unit in the back of the gun here in the injection port. The hop unit on this gun seems to work fine, I haven't really got any problems with it, it's perfectly consistent and it's perfectly usable. You have two sling mounts on this gun, you have one on the front and one here and you can put this one on the other side as well. The magazine release on this gun is this ambidextrous button behind the mag well here. You can snap the magazines into place and then you can just pop them out like so. The battery compartment in this gun is located behind this rubber butt plate and you just pull it off like so. And this gun's wired to Dean's and I have a 30 amp fuse in place just in case something goes bang. For now I'm going to stick with these 7.4 volt and 1100 mAh 25C LiPos. I don't really want to run it on a 11.1 battery until I know it's all settled down and it works fine on the field. I don't want to blow it up immediately, I want to get some use out of this thing. So the trigger now is on safe and we put it on semi-auto. You're not going to be able to fire it that rapidly because of the big clunky trigger, but that's good enough for me. And then full auto. Now when I last chrono this, I was getting 30 rounds a second on this battery, so I'm going to chrono it again because I think I did a bit of work on this gun since then. I can't remember exactly, but we'll chrono it anyway. For the chrono test, we are using Specnorales .25s on this 7.4 volt 25C LiPo. So we're going to do some semi-auto. And then full auto. <laughs> I love this thing. Right, let's clear it. I'm getting a bit excited here. <laughs> and I think, apart from the rounds that you get left in the hop tube, yeah, emptied the mag perfectly fine. Some semi auto shots to clear it. It's bloody noisy without the butt plate on, I tell you. There we are, we're getting around 30 rounds a second at around 300 FPS on 0.25s, which would make it around 330 on 2s. 30 rounds a second is around about 1800 rounds a minute, so yeah, it's a nice juicy fire rate that. It will empty a mid cap in about 4 seconds. Granted it's not as fast as some of the other DSG builds, and I reckon we could probably scrape 40-45 with a 11.1 if it can handle it. Now the internals of this gun aren't completely stock as I'm sure you can imagine. To start off with, we have the X Cortec trigger MOSFET like I mentioned earlier. This will help increase the fire rate slightly and it will also help reduce the wear on the contacts. The motor in this gun is a GFC F2 Tornado motor. It's a high speed motor, but then a lot of motors nowadays are apparently high speed since they've introduced neodymium magnets. If I remember correctly, the bevel and the spur gear are JG, and the sector gear is a SHS dual sector gear. This also comes with a tappet plate designed to work with it, so it's got that tappet plate in as well. The spring guide is a Garda bearing version 3 spring guide. The spring I think is a M160, it was out of a 500 FPS Ares Amoeba Striker. The piston is a Ares Amoeba piston with a steel rack which has been short stroked to 8 teeth if I remember correctly. Like I said earlier, the full auto contacts are a tactile button switch on a piece of aluminium door plate. And since the MOSFET does all the switching, the current passing through the contacts is going to be like microamps. It's going to be absolutely tiny amounts of current. Now working on this gun isn't too bad. I quite like the way you can split it into two halves really easily to get at the barrel and hop assembly. And getting the gearbox out isn't too difficult either, but it's just the trigger. I, I don't like the triggers of orgs. I don't really like version 3 triggers as it is. They're a bit of a pain to work on. But org triggers are notoriously fussy. This has nothing to do with it being JG or whatever. That just It's just an inherent thing when you're trying to replicate a orgs trigger. I'm not a big fan of progressive triggers at all. That's why I made this sort of rudimentary selector switch here, which seems to work quite well. For my attachments, I've chucked on a swing mount, 3 times magnifier and a holographic sight. I've had to shift everything back though so I can fit my scope cam on the front when I do use this. I am thinking about taking the magnifier off because it's going to be right in my face. There used to be a front grip on this gun which would swing out with this little latch here, but that's long gone so I just hold it by the... I don't know if you call that the trigger guard, I suppose it is the trigger guard by the... the this bit. And that works quite well, it's quite comfortable. And even though I'm not particularly a big fan of the look of the org, it's a very ergonomic and comfortable gun to hold. It's nice and lightweight, and the fact that you've got the weight of the gearbox at the back, the front end is quite light, so all of the weight is at the back, so it tips into your shoulder, so it's nice and balanced. Now the one thing that's especially annoying with the org, especially this one firing at the fire rate that it does, it's incredibly noisy. Because you've got the gearbox at the back, it's basically right next to your ear. And in this case, it's firing at 30 rounds a second, so it's slightly noisy. I'm honestly contemplating stuffing some cotton wool in my right ear when I'm using this because it's so noisy. And even then you get the bone conductivity of having your cheekbone against this, uh, against the stock of it. It's incredibly noisy. But 
the full auto, it's it's going to be fun, I reckon. If it lasts, I think it's going to be a good blast to use. So now, since I did the spoiler video for this gun, people were asking for like a tutorial on how to do DSGs, and frankly, I don't really want to do one just yet because I'm so new to it. I feel like yeah, there's probably better places to look at. Um, I I don't watch them often, but I think Wag Entertainment do a lot of speeds, uh, like DSG builds and all that. You're probably better off checking them out, and there's some other YouTubers who do it. I, I'm completely inexperienced with this. For all I know, I could take this out in the field and it could just catch fire in my hands, but everything so far seems to be working on it. Um, I can tell you the basics of it, but I don't, I don't really want to go to I don't really want to tell you exactly how to do it because I'm not sure if I've done it right so I do want to use this as some games first before I give you like a proper conclusion and tell you you know this is a good way of building a DSG uh, this is not at all the fastest firing DSG you can find this was just a sort of what I had laying around and also it was designed to be I wanted something reliable that could be used in woodland um, I wasn't that fussed, like I said earlier, I wasn't that fussed with trigger response, I just wanted the full auto. It's got a nice trigger response, but you're not really going to be able to fire it too quickly with that big clanky trigger. In regards to the base gun, the JG Org A2, yeah, if you want if you want an Org, I would recommend it. It seems to be a perfectly reliable gun, and considering the amount of things this has had done to it, being a DMR and now a DSG, it's worked fine, the body works nice and solid. No creaks, it's, it's, it's well built, and the internals are solid as well. It's got metal bushings by standard. Uh, how long the gearbox casing will last firing at this fire rate, I don't know. But um, it is noisy, like I said, but that's not down to this specific gun. It's just the fact you've got a gearbox in what is basically a, a sound box. In a, it all reverberates inside there, and it's incredibly loud. Getting the gearbox and barrel out of these things is a piece of cake. The gearbox basically just drops out the back after you remove a couple of screws, and you've got all this quick detach system to remove the outer barrel assembly. It's brilliant. So this is my first ESG build, known as the Uber Womble, and I honestly cannot wait to use this thing. It's going to be a blast, I reckon. I don't know how long it will last. That's why I can't really recommend my style of building of not bothering to radius it keeping it nice and simple i don't know it's it's uncharted territory really so we'll see how it goes but hopefully we should be seeing some gameplay of this gun i have got a event on the 11th of april yep that's it and i've got some new cameras i'm going to try out and i'm really really looking forward to using this thing so we'll see how that goes then but yeah this has been my first dsg build so if it hasn't been that sort of in depth i don't really want to go into recommending this is how you do it, this, 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 because I it's it's unproven frankly. It seems to be working alright. There are better channels and sources of information to go to, so have a look around for that if you're really interested in building a DSG build. It's it's not something you want to do on your only gun. It's something that's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of working out. And if you're gonna do it half fast there's a potential that you're gonna mess something up and cause a real problem and you know strip everything in the gearbox and all that. Granted, I have been sort of a bit slapdash when building this, so we don't know, we'll have to see. So make sure you keep an eye on the channel, and hopefully soon we should be getting some gameplay with the Uber Womble. So that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this video at any point, then make sure you leave a like. Check out the rest of the channel, see if it's what you like. And if you don't want to miss out on any new content, then make sure you subscribe and enable notifications. And as always guys, play fair, play safe, take care.